so, so, so good to know that God gives us another chance and another chance and another chance and another chance and that he stands with arms open wide to receive us.
Welcome to Crossover Bible Fellowship Online Worship Experience, where we focus on teaching people the Word of God and touching people with the love of God. We are excited you have joined us and want you to know we are praying for each of you and your families. We do not take for granted your stopping in to get to know God or to grow in His Word. We believe these messages are life transforming. For those of you who frequently join us, we are overjoyed that you regularly benefit from these encounters. We welcome you to partner with us as you see fit by investing in this ministry so we can continue to make disciples of all nations. Please click the link below at any time to become a digital disciple and grow with us. Now sit back and prepare to hear the life-changing, life-transforming Word of God. Hey, Crossover family. Welcome back to uh, another Bible study. The Emmaus Experience Bible study as we uh, introduced the last sermon in our sermon series, So How Are You Really Doing? It's our effort to address uh, the various needs of the people during this pandemic uh, environment that we're living in. How are you really doing? We've addressed several uh, subject matters over the last three weeks. We've talked about uh, contentment uh, at all three sermons, and that's our big, big focus. How are you really doing? How are you content? with where God has you during this pandemic environment, whether it be the loss of job, whether it be uh, losing a loved one, whatever state you're in, uh, are you content there and how are you doing with that? We started off by dealing with uh, Paul's personification of contentment and looking at Philippians chapter four, contentment is the resting in God's providence. It's actually just being okay with where God uh, has you and, and, and God's ability. Contentment is also recognizing how God is working in your life, knowing that all that's going on in your life, God is behind the scenes. He's the one sitting on the throne and he's in control of everything. But also contentment is uh, depending on God's power to endure through life. You're not operating in your own strength. You're not you're not enduring this uh, this environment, this season that you're in under your own strength. You're actually enduring it uh, based off the strength of God. We also talked about uh, a particular area of finance. How are you doing in terms of uh, your finance and being content where God has you? Because there's a lot of traps, uh, especially when we're in need. Uh, people can approach us and we can fall for different things and we can reach. We talked about reaching for things that are out of our uh, distance and, and how that can cause problems for us. So being content financially, worrying about situations financially and trying to do things to better your situation that's outside of the will of God. And how God doesn't want us there. And then last week, Elder Reggie Holiday talked about worry, the enemy of content. The enemy of content. And so our whole goal throughout this series has been to get you, uh, as well as us, to be content. To be content where we are, where God has us. And uh, we're going to dive deeper into that uh, on tonight as we look at uh, a few passages. We're going to be talking about contentment throughout or uh, a certain 
uh, area of contentment, shall I say. And we're going to be looking at a few passages. Let us go to God in prayer first, and, uh, and then we'll uh, address our scripture for tonight. And then we'll talk, we'll introduce the subject that we're going to be talking about. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather uh, virtually. God, we, we don't have the, the opportunity to touch uh, people with the love of God, as our uh, motto says here at Crossover Bible Fellowship, God, but we can still teach people the word of God. Uh, and we have to just find other ways to touch one another, be creative, God. It may call us to do something uh, from a more traditional approach, write a letter or something to that effect, God. But here we are gathering virtually to learn more about your word, to see what it is you have to say to us tonight about this area of contentment that we've been talking about for the past uh, three weeks. So thank you, God, for allowing us to be back. I pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about spiritual contentment. Spiritual contentment are the dangers of being spiritually content. We've been encouraging you to be content in certain areas uh, throughout these last three weeks. But tonight, we're going to warn you about contentment. You see, contentment is just like anything else, out of context. Out of context, it can be dangerous. It can be, uh, uh, um, it, it can be disastrous for you. It's kind of like water. It's kind of like water. Water has good purpose, but uh, out of context, when it's not used properly or when it comes on too strong, it can cause more damage, more harm than good. I remember uh, back in 19, uh, around 1987, it was New Year's Eve. My, uh, my mom and I, we were living in an apartment complex. And on New Year's Eve night, we heard this hard knock at the door. And so it was about 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, and you could tell it was, it was an urgent knock. So we jumped out of bed, we went to the door, and someone was telling us, there's a fire next door, get out. And so we grabbed what we could, and we ran outside, and sure enough, the apartment right next to us was in a blaze. Come to find out that the reason why this apartment was on fire was because the neighbor had fallen asleep while cooking, had fallen asleep while cooking. And when they woke up, they found the stove in flames. And so what they tried to do was take water and dash it on the fire to extinguish it and put it out. Now, many of you are already shaking your head right now like, nah, that ain't what you want to do on a grease fire. Because although water is good, and water can put out some fires. There are some contexts that water is more disastrous than good. And that's, that's just what contentment is. And while we want you to be content in your finances and we don't want you to worry, we want you to be content with where God has you. What we don't want is for you to be content spiritually. We don't want you to be content spiritually. We want you to strive for growth. We want you to strive for, as the Bible says, and we'll read about in a minute, spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity. And so in order to do that, there are some things that we have to fight against as it pertains to being spiritually content. If you would, turn in your Bibles to uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse number 12. Philippians chapter 3, verse number 12. Very familiar passage, as a matter of fact. Elder Reggie Holiday had us in Philippians chapter 4 on our first message, but we're going to back up a little bit uh, because Paul is going to address the Philippian church in terms of uh, being content or striving for better and not being spiritually content uh, with where he was. Philippians chapter, chapter uh, 3, Philippians chapter 3, verse number 12, the Bible says, not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect. But I press on so that I may lay hold of it, of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ. Now, let me set this up for you because it wouldn't be fair for some of us who, is not, who are not familiar with this particular story. This is Paul's letter to the Philippian church. All right. He's writing them and he, he goes through a, a, a list of things that he has accomplished in his life. He goes through a list of things that he's accomplished in his life. And then he finally tells them, listen, out of all that I've accomplished, I, I've considered it to be dung. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I was the son of this. I, this is my background. None of that stuff matters to me now. What really matters is me striving for spiritual excellence. If I was to be content with all that I had accomplished, 
If I was to be content with where I was in my religious upbringing and my knowledge, my religious uh, knowledge that I have and my education, if I was content there, then I wouldn't be writing this letter to you. I wouldn't be talking to you. But here's what I did. I had, a, I had an encounter with God and I realized that none of that stuff matters and, and I can't rely on spiritual contentment. I can't rely on that. I have to strive for better. And so that's what he's talking about. That's what he says. I, I, I pressed. I, I, I didn't I didn't uh, uh, I wasn't satisfied with that. He says in verse number 13, brethren, I do not regard myself of having laid hold of it yet. One thing I do forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. Here it is. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. And if in anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that to you also. However, let us keep living by that same standard to which we have attained. We're talking about tonight avoiding spiritual contentment, avoiding spiritual contentment. The first thing that Paul tells us or the first thing that we want to uh, make note of in our in our lesson on tonight is that. Believers must reject spiritual contentment by striving for spiritual maturity. Believers must reject spiritual contentment by striving for spiritual maturity. Verse number 12, Paul opens it up. He says, not that I've already attained it or I've already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold uh, for that which uh, I, uh, I was laid hold of in Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself of having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me and reaching forward to what lies ahead. Paul says, listen, there's many things that I've accomplished in my life, but I was willing to put all of that down so that I can strive to be better uh, spiritually, so that I can strive for spiritual growth. Hebrews 6 says it like this. Therefore, leaving the elementary teaching about Christ, let us press on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and from faith toward God. He said, let us press on toward maturity. This press on literally, it's, it's, it's just like what Paul said in Philippians. Paul's Philippians press was moving forward. Uh, in Hebrews, it means to move along while one is being sustained, propelled or driven. Paul says, listen, once the foundation of, is laid, uh, the book of Hebrews, once the foundation is laid, that, that foundation in Christ is to push us towards striving for maturity, meaning we can't be spiritually content with where we are. We have to continue to grow in Christ and not settle for elementary things. Hebrews calls it elementary teaching. In other words, there's some foundational stuff. Some of you who are listening right now may be at an elementary level of teaching. I've said this before. I'll say it again. I believe, in my humble opinion, that there are many ministries out there that are, do, that are doing good. But I believe that there are some ministries that are elementary in terms of their level of getting people into Christ. And that's fine. Everybody needs, uh, uh, everybody needs certain levels of teaching. But then when you get to another level, some of you guys, you, you've heard it before, like, man, I need more. I, I'm thirsting. I'm hungry. That's because you're moving and growing spiritually, which is where you should be, where you should be. You're not content. You're restless. You can't get comfortable. And so God is propelling you and driving you to another level of faith, to another level of spiritual maturity. You're not content. That's why you want more. You're not content. That's why you need more. That's why, watch this. That's why there's some, there's some, there's some ministries or some sermons that, that you hear and you're like, eh, okay, all right. That doesn't make it bad. It doesn't make what that preacher is saying is bad. I'm, we're, not, we're, not, we're not church bashing or preacher bashing. It just means that you have obviously arrived at a certain level in your spiritual growth that that no longer works for you. And that's not a bad thing. That's something that you are okay to embrace because it may be time for you to move on a little bit further. But make sure as you do that, you're not relying just on the pastor or the preacher to get you there. Ah, See, many times we can we can want spiritual growth, but we want it to come from somewhere else and not inside of us. 
We, we don't want to have anything to do with our spiritual growth. But Paul says, no, that doesn't work either. Because Philippians chapter 2 says this. Watch this. Uh, it says, so then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Paul says, y'all did fine while I was there, but, but, but you're doing greater now that I'm gone because you're still moving. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation. In other words, there's some work that you have to do for your spiritual growth. There's some work that you have to do in order to move towards that place that God wants you. That place that God wants you to be. That growth. Uh, uh, there are some things that you have to do as men to grow in Christ, as women to grow in Christ, as husbands to grow in Christ, as wives to grow in Christ. It doesn't come automatically. You've got to put in the work. And Paul is saying, once you, what, what, watch what he says. You're not working for your salvation. Let's be clear. You're working out of it because you are saved, because you do recognize that the Holy Spirit is living inside of you. And you do recognize that all Christ has done for you. And you do recognize that God has purpose for your life. You're working out of that. You're working from that position, from that place, from that mentality. You're not settling on being spiritually content where you are. You're moving forward. And that's all Paul was saying. He said, I'm pressing, I'm pressing, I'm pressing. So believers must reject spiritual contentment by striving for spiritual maturity, for spiritual maturity. The next thing, spiritual contentment is the enemy of spiritual maturity and spiritual transformation. It's the enemy of spiritual maturity and spiritual transformation. If you would go, go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says this. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. He says, that's what we're doing. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 says this. But speaking truth and love, we ought to grow up in all aspects into him, who is the head, even Christ, even Christ. Spiritual contentment is the enemy for spiritual maturity and transformation, is the enemy for spiritual maturity and transformation. When you and I become settled, become complacent spiritually, then what we're actually doing is we're stunning our own growth spiritually. We're stunning our growth and we're stunting our transformation. We think that just because we've arrived at a certain location in life, that there's nothing else for us to accomplish spiritually. There's nothing for us, else for us to attain spiritually. We've gotten comfortable in it. We've gotten comfortable in it. So much so, to watch this, when God requires more of us to expose the fact that we've gotten spiritually content, it saddens us. It saddens us when God, when God asks you to, come on, come on, come on, step a, little, step, step a little further, move a little closer towards me. I need you to get out of your comfort zone. It's saddening because now we got to get out of our comfort zone. We got to give up some of our favorite things. Why? Because we've gotten spiritually content. We've gotten spiritually content. There was a, there was a man in the Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 19. The Bible titles him, calls him the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler. He, he's, he's a rich person. He has money. He has a notoriety and he has things. He's got stuff. He's got stuff. And so, and so he uh, was under the impression that he was doing fine spiritually. He was doing fine spiritually. It, you, can, you can turn that Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, verse number 16. It says this. Someone came to him and said, teacher, this is, this is them coming to Jesus. What good thing Shall I do that I may obtain eternal life? This is the rich young ruler talking. He said to him, Jesus says to him, why are you asking me about what is good? There's only one who is good. But if you wish to enter eternal into, uh, into life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Then he said, which one? He says, well, Jesus says that you should not commit murder. You should not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself, as yourself. Now, when the man hears this list in his mind, 
in his mind, he's checking them off. He's, he's doing inventory as every time Jesus says something, he has a mental inventory. Okay, got that. Jesus says, don't commit murder. Fine. Don't commit adultery. Got that. Don't steal. Don't have to. Uh, don't bear false witness. That ain't my, my, my thing. Honor your father and mother. Yeah, that's fine. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, got it. And here's his response. All these things I have kept. What am I still lacking? He, in other words, he says, I have, I have done all of this, and so if I've done these things, what is it that I'm missing? What am I lacking? Jesus said to him, if you wish to become complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come and follow me. Come and follow me. Give up all that you have. Be willing to give up all, that, all of your worldly possessions, all that you've acquired worldly, all your worldly wealth, give it up for my sake, then follow me. Look what the Bible says next. Young man heard the statement. He went away grieving for he was one who owned much property, owned much property. In other words, watch this. He had, he had gotten spiritually content with where he was and thought he had arrived until Jesus challenged him to go one step further. One step further. Brothers and sisters, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I've been to that place where you're like, you're feeling good about where you are spiritually. You're feeling good about what God, uh, uh, the time you're spending with God. You're feeling good about the fact that you are uh, memorizing scripture and you're in school and all of that. And then God comes along with one more challenge. One more challenge. Get you out your comfort zone. And like this rich young ruler, Many of us hang our head down and walk away sad because we realize we haven't arrived where we thought we had arrived. It could be for this rich young ruler, it was him giving up his possessions, giving up his possessions. But for some of us, it could be giving up some relationships. For some of us, God may be calling us away from some relationships. And, and when he does that, he exposes the fact that we're not spiritually mature like we thought. We've gotten spiritually content. And that's not what God wants us to have. He doesn't want us there. And so spiritual contentment is the enemy of spiritual maturity and spiritual transformation and spiritual transformation. That second Corinthians, it says we are being transformed into the image. Watch this. We are not to be happy until we start looking like Christ. We're not to be happy until we start looking like Christ. And then we we still not happy because we haven't become Christ. We'll never become Christ. But we want to get as close as we can. And here is let me give you the answer to the test uh, uh, why you're still taking it. You will never become exactly like Christ. But our job is to continue to strive to be more like Christ. That's as close as we can get. Close as we can get is to become more like Christ, but we're never, at, we're never to settle and be content with where we are, with where we are. Uh, 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 been, been looking at a, at a few uh, bodybuilders, bodybuilders, guys out there, you know, getting their muscles together and, and guys out there trying to get in shape. I've been trying to do some things uh, uh, over the last couple of months. You know, proud of my accomplishments. Father's Day, 230 pounds. You know, a few months later, got down to 210. I ain't there right now, but that's okay. You know, I, 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 had, a, I had a goal that I was trying to accomplish. I was trying to accomplish, and that's, that's the point. That's the point that I'm trying to make. There are people that will set goals for themselves so that, and they won't rest until they get there. The challenge to you and I tonight is don't rest until we become more like Christ, until we become in the image of Christ. We're still striving. Every day we're waking up trying to be more like Christ. We're not satisfied with where we were yesterday spiritually. We're not satisfied with where we were last year spiritually. We're still moving forward. We're still moving forward. We're still pressing. As Paul said, pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. I'm pressing. I'm moving. But watch this. Not only am I moving, but I'm motivated and being pushed, propelled, as Hebrews told us. I'm being propelled to be more like Christ because I'm operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so believers must reject spiritual contentment by striving for spiritual maturity in their life. Spiritual contentment is the enemy of spiritual maturity and spiritual transformation. But understand this, 
We do not function uh, as individuals when we are in the body of Christ. And because we don't function individually, we have to consider the body of Christ in terms of our spiritual maturity. And so that leads us to our third point. The church can't afford to allow its members to be spiritually content because how it affects and impacts the entire body of believers. The entire body of believers. We cannot afford to allow its members to be spiritually content because of how it affects and impacts the entire body of believers. You've, heard, you've read the, uh, uh, heard the, the motto here at Crossover Bible Fellowship. We got it written in big letters. We teach people the word of God. We touch people with the love of God. We do that by, by making sure that there are systems in place and programs in place. When you come join Crossover Bible Fellowship, like many churches, like many churches, but Crossover Bible Fellowship, there, there's a, there's a uh, class that we want you to take. Understanding your new life. Why? Because we want to make sure you equip. We want to make sure you're girded up. We want to make sure you, you're not settled in spiritually and spiritually content based on where you were at your last church. We want to make sure we grow you. We've got uh, uh, classes, Operation Transformation. It's an, it's an opportunity for us to come together in groups of six or seven and grow together. Sh uh, 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 iron sharpens iron. We get brothers with brothers and sisters with sisters and challenge and confirm and all of those things to make us better and stronger. Make us better and stronger. Our men's ministry, our women's ministry, our marriage ministry, uh, all of those places, Pathfinders and all of those ministries are designed to build us up as a body, to strengthen us up as a body, to gird us up as a body. Why? Because when one of us is weak, when one of us is not trying to uh, uh, grow spiritually, when, when one of us is content spiritually with where we are, it affects and impacts the entire body, the entire body. And so we have to understand that we have to Ephesians chapter four gives us a great explanation of that. Ephesians chapter four, verse number 11, Ephesians chapter four, verse number 11. This is when he's talking about uh, 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 Paul writes to, uh, to the church at Ephesus and he's giving them instructions. He's reminding them God gave some apostles, verse number 11, some prophets, some evangelists and some as pastors and teachers. Watch this for the equipping of the saints. For the work of service, not just so that you can know more Bible, not just so that you can go around and you can you can get a, a certificate saying you went through this class, but it's for the work of service. It's the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the son of God to mature uh, to a mature man. To the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children. Here it is. Look what he keeps saying. He's talking about ch being childlike and then he's talking about being mature. And in order to go from one to the other, you can't be satisfied with being a child. You can't be satisfied with uh, being a babe in Christ. You can't be satisfied with just the milk of the word. The milk of the word is fine, but you can't be satisfied there. You can't be spiritually complacent there. Watch this. Verse 14. As a result, we are no longer, we're no longer to be children. Tossed here and there. Look at, the, look at the characteristics of a spiritually immature person. They are tossed here and there by, by waves and carried out by every wind of doctrine. They tossed and then they carry. It's just what, what, whatever, what's the new phase now? That's where I'm going. What's the new uh, religion now? That's what I want to be a part of. Who, who's, the, who's the newest speaker on the scene? That's where I want to go. We're being tossed about by every wind of doctrine. Every wind of doctrine. That's a spiritually immature person. He says, by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness, deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we ought to grow up in all aspects unto him who is the head, even Christ. From whom the whole body, here's where I'm going, here's where I'm going, here's, why the, here's where the church, the church fits in and the church becomes relevant. From the whole body, from whom the whole body being fitted together and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part. Each individual part causing the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Everybody, every believer, every saint of God 
in the body of Christ here at Crossover Bible Fellowship. Let me just deal with this body, the local body. All right. That in the local body, every saint, every believer, God is equipped. God has given you something. But when you become spiritually content, you're just happy with having what God has given you. You haven't grown to the place where you want to give it out for the body. You're not in the place where you want to serve. You're not in the place where you want to be called on to do a little bit more. You're spiritually content. Matter of fact, here it is. You're content with being saved, but that sanctification stuff you're not down with. You're not down with that. That's what it means to be spiritually content. That's what it means. It means, it means you're okay with being saved. You're okay with spiritually content. Spiritual contentment is being satisfied with salvation while rejecting or failing to pursue sanctification. That's what spiritually content meant. Sorry I didn't tell you that in the beginning, but that's where many of us are. We're spiritually content. We're satisfied with being saved. We're satisfied. Did we, listen, we, did, uh, did I hear him say that our name was written in the book of life? Did I hear that? Okay, I'm good. I'm good. All that other stuff is irrelevant. All that other stuff I'm going to let y'all do. That's the pastor's job to reach out to somebody who's in need. That's the church's job to give to somebody who's in need. That, they asking for that, that, that Acts 24 fund, whatever that fund is, is giving money. That's the, I pay my tithes, that's all I want to do. That's the person who is spiritually content and they don't want God to challenge them, to call them out, to move them closer to an image of Christ. To an image of Christ, and here it is. The church cannot afford, the church can't afford to allow its members, the believers of the body, to be spiritually content. We can't. Why? Why? Jesus says it when, 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 when his disciples addressed him. Uh, Jesus says, Listen, the harvest is right. The harvest is right. It's the laborers that we got a problem with. It's those spiritually content individuals that makes it more difficult on the ones who are working. And so we got to challenge all of our brothers and sisters not to be spiritually content. Be content with where God has you financially and not stretch yourself too thin and go and, and run after everything, trying to get more money, trying to get more stuff. Be content with where God has you. Don't worry about where you are. Don't worry about the things of this world and don't worry and have anxiety over things. Be content with where God has you understand what contentment is all about. It's, it's knowing that God has you. It's knowing that God, God, God is going to give you the strength to endure. Just be content. But when it comes to your spiritual growth, when it comes to your spiritual maturity, when it comes to you giving back to the church all that God has given you for the equipping of the entire body, for the working of the body, then you don't want to be content there. You don't want to be content there. Can I be honest with you? Many of us have gotten content over the last couple of months because things are not uh, what they used to be. We're not coming to the church gathering like we used to. So nobody sees us. And so we can kind of, oh, we used to hide. We used to hide in the pews. Now we can hide in the living room. Now we can hide in the kitchen and we can just be in our bedroom and we don't have to get involved. But understand this, saints, understand this, just because things have changed in our normalcy and we're not coming and gathering at the house of God and we're not we're not coming and spending time with one another. And you don't have to get up and get dressed on Sunday morning to come out and all of that. Understand, just because we don't have to come to the church. It doesn't mean that we've gotten away with being the church. It doesn't mean that we should be spiritually content with this environment that we're in. We have to still reach out. We have to still contact one another and call one another and check on one another. We have to still make sure that we're serving and praying for and doing whatever we can do in this in this environment to show that we're growing and we're concerned about moving forward and being mature in Christ. Be content with where God may have you, but don't be content spiritually. Strive to do better. Press, as Paul says, press, press on toward the goal and the call of Jesus Christ. So as this series come to a close, 
How are you really doing? With being content mentally and emotionally while rejecting contentment spiritually. God bless you. and May God keep you. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. We hope and pray that you've been encouraged, equipped, challenged, and changed by the Word of God. If you are currently without a church home, we would love for you to be a valuable part of our Crossover Bible Fellowship family. If you are unsure about your relationship with Christ or unclear about how His gospel applies to you, we would be excited to walk with you through what it means to be saved. Simply reach out to us at membership at crossoverbf.com.